Vilo, físico, teórico de Harvard, que de nuevo está con nosotros en Negocios Televisión. Hi, Avi, thanks for being here in Negocios TV with us again. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, we were talking about the NASA. What do you think about the press conference? Well, there was not much uh, new information there. Um, I was looking for the data and the, the images were relatively fuzzy. Uh, the best image that was presented was from the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, at a distance of about 30 million kilometers from uh, 3 Atlas on October 3rd, uh, 2025. And uh, what we saw in that image is uh, uh, some uh, smearing as a result of the jitter of the camera, so it didn't perform form as, as well as I was hoping for. Um, a pixel resolution is about 30 kilometers, um, but uh, there was some smearing there. And what I see from the image is just um, a, an extension and an elongation of uh, the glow around the 3A Atlas in the direction of motion not uh, necessarily away from the sun, the way we see for comets, actually uh, something uh, is pointed ahead of the object. So it cannot be material uh, lagging behind the object because of the radiation pressure from the sun or the solar wind. It's actually ahead of the object. Uh, and that's what we've seen also from the Hubble Space Telescope image uh, uh, on uh, July 21st. There was some glow ahead of the object, which is very puzzling because uh, we thought it's an anti-tail, meaning uh, uh, some uh, uh, extension in the direction of the sun. But it turns out that it's actually in the direction of motion according to the high-rise uh, image, and uh, we have to understand that. Why would the object have uh, an, a glow, a plume of uh, uh, gas or material ahead of it in the direction of motion and not related to the direction of the sun, which is 90 degrees relative to the direction of motion uh, in this image? So that was uh, the most interesting aspect. But otherwise, uh, NASA pretty much, uh, uh, as, as I predicted, uh, you know, an hour before, uh, I was asked by a reporter what to expect. And I said, NASA will probably repeat the mantra uh, of uh, that Three i Atlas is a comet, and then uh, show some fuzzy images that do not necessarily give any uh, important new information. And uh, I was not surprised, actually. And uh, that, that was uh, uh, unfortunate. I, I was hoping maybe I will be surprised, but no. Um, and uh, uh, much of what they discussed, we already knew from the summer. There were, there was, it was based on data from the Hubble Space Telescope, the Webb Space Telescope, SphereX uh, Space Observatory, and some other missions that have much smaller cameras. So the images are very fuzzy. There was also a report from MAVEN, which is a spacecraft uh, around uh, Mars, and uh, that uh, provided evidence for hydrogen. Uh, in the ultraviolet, uh, uh, they saw uh, spectroscopically that there is hydrogen uh, associated with 3 atlas. That's not surprising because uh, previously, we detected water and uh, uh, hydroxyl um, uh, ions, uh, OH molecules. Um, so uh, the fact that there is uh, hydrogen, I mean, is not uh, particularly exciting because it's the most abundant element in the universe. You expect it under many circumstances, for example, from the breakup of water molecules. There is not, nothing really... Uh, important about it, except that it can be, it can help to calibrate the amount of mass loss in water from the object. But one thing that they repeated and uh, they do not realize uh, is, is inaccurate is that um, um, they said that this object behaves like a comet and therefore it must be a comet. And now what do they mean by behave like a comet? They mean that there is uh, some gas uh, shed by the object. So there are uh, ices uh, and perhaps some dust being shed of the object as a result of illumination by sunlight. But even if you imagine a spacecraft, an artificial object, technological object, as it goes through the uh, called the interstellar medium, uh, it would accumulate ices and will accumulate dust on its surface. And these ices and dust will be released once illuminated by sunlight. And so uh, you should not judge a book by its cover. You know, this is just the outer skin 
uh, of the object that uh, uh, was cons uh, analyzed um, in, in, in before the closest approach to the sun. And actually, there were much more um, revealing details that came out from images taken after uh, three atlas passed closest to the sun. That was October 29th. And in recent weeks, uh, there were a number of amateur astronomers with telescopes that cost only a few thousand dollars. And they gave us much more exciting uh, images than, uh, you know, the, the very expensive billion dollar scale uh, uh, camera that uh, uh, was put uh, on the Mars Reconnaissance uh, Orbiter. So, um, you know, the entire um, uh, it wasn't clear that we get more information from very expensive instruments employed by, by NASA uh, because they were not designed to look at such an object. And the amateur astronomers with much cheaper instruments uh, were able to give us more information in recent uh, days. Um, and I'm just looking for the next few weeks because uh, it gets uh, closer to Earth and uh, uh, it will get closest to Earth on December 19th, and uh, the biggest telescopes on Earth will look at it, as well as um, the Webb telescope, the Hubble telescope. So we will get much better information in the coming weeks. We can, for example, uh, measure the velocity uh, of the jets, the composition of the jets, the amount of mass carried by the jets. This will allow us to infer whether the jets originate from pockets of ice on the surface of Three Atlas, or maybe they're associated with technological thrusters. You know, if, if their speed is very large compared to what we expect from the sublimation of ice. Waiting for more information, maybe I would like to ask you about uh, the NASA. What is NASA hiding and why are their image so poor? No, Because uh, you were talking about this, amateur, people amateur have better image than, than the NASA. It's not, it's not no, yeah. normal. Well, I don't think they were hiding. I think uh, it's just that um, uh, the instruments uh, they uh, sent to space were not designed uh, optimally to capture better data on 3 Atlas, except, of, of course, for the Hubble Space Telescope and the Webb Space Telescope. Uh, but, um, you know, in retrospect, um, they were holding on to data that was not particularly exciting. So the disappointment is from the fact that they held the data for 45 days, uh, and they then made a press release, a conference uh, as if uh, it's really important because usually you hold such a press conference when there is something really exciting. Uh, but then there was nothing really exciting, not, nothing new. So the disappointment is really with the way they managed the situation. Uh, they could have done two things, either release the data because it's not very, you know, particularly overwhelming, uh, they could have re released it much earlier, um, or uh, instead of making such a big fuss about this press conference, they could have just uh, made the, you know, the data available to scientists without uh, uh, involving NASA officials in the public uh, uh, dissemination of this data. Well, and for more data, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, the NASA. Why did NASA not even mention the biggest mysteries about three ayatlas? Uh, for example, the size, uh, the trajectory. Uh, they don't yeah. talk about, about that. Yeah, so um, indeed uh, that was also disappointing because uh, they just focus on the message that it's a natural comet and that. Uh, it, everything was sort of expected, uh, as, as you might uh, think of a comet, um, a, a, other than uh, the fact that it came from a new environment. And what they should have done is uh, say, well, uh, you know, it, it shares uh, some of the properties of known comets, but in fact it has some unusual properties that would be interesting for us to figure out. And, um, you know, if I, I didn't necessarily expect that they would mention all 12 anomalies that I listed on uh, medium.com, but I, I thought they should have at least mentioned a few of them, uh, like the big size that makes the mass, uh, you know, a thousand times more than the mass of uh, the second object, Borisov, or a million times more than the mass of the first object, uh, Oumuamua. And that's very unusual. Why would we be so fortunate to get uh, such a big package delivered uh, over the past decade. And the second is, of course, the alignment with the plane of the planets, which has no explanation. So they could have said, you know, there are some properties here that we don't understand. 
But that's, that's the way science is done. Uh, you should acknowledge things that uh, are puzzling because they may lead you to some important insights, but they do not acknowledge that. They just talk about the fact that it's a comet, forget about it being a, unusual, and uh, there are some variants on, on known properties of comets, which is not really the correct message. Uh, and, and of course, there are other anomalies that I listed, that, but that just these two anomalies that I just mentioned, uh, they bring you to a, 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 an estimate of a probability of one in 100,000, uh, just because they're so rare, you know, the, the, such a big mass, is extremely rare and also uh, alignment with uh, a particular plane, the plane of the planets is also extremely rare. Uh, and so they should have mentioned that these rare qualities make it uh, um, puzzling and, and we would like to figure it out. I think the public would have resonated with the desire to learn more about the object rather than basically sending the message that we pretty much figured it out. Well, for more info, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, the trajectory of three Ayadlas. Uh, NASA, NASA uh, acknowledged that it cannot track the trajectory of three Ayadlas. Uh, is this normal, A.B.? Um, well, we do track it because we have data that is not related to NASA. So there are uh, 227 observatories on Earth that monitored it before it went behind the sun. Uh, and now they're coming back to monitor it again. So we had a gap uh, during the month of October when observatories on Earth could not really look at the three atlas. But other than this gap, it's being monitored continuously. And uh, soon it will be monitored even more because the, there is a campaign by the international uh, asteroid warning network that uh, will start in uh, a week and will last uh, two months where uh, there is a coordinated set of observations by uh, all possible telescopes on earth and uh, hopefully you know we will see very clearly if it deviates from its path and uh, i mean i'm not sure what nasa uh, was able to get uh, during the month of october but what i'm saying is that it's pretty much irrelevant given that we have a lot of data in the five months before that and we will have the most important data in the next month. Waiting for the next month, uh, I would like to ask you about the anomalies. Why is the NASA avoiding the anomalies and what are the 12 anomalies uh, for you about these three ayatlas? Yeah, so uh, I cannot uh, tell you why they are avoiding it. I think my guess is they're trying to establish a consensus view and they are afraid of taking any risk. That's why they very often are reluctant to discuss uh, the, the possibility that life existed on Mars. For example, they are very reserved in, in what they say. So uh, they are extremely careful and they don't want to take any risks. So they will stick to what uh, is the most common interpretation. That would be my guess. They are not particularly, I mean, those people that were there were not, are not uh, active scientists that are leading the way in, in, in figuring out what three atlas is. So, you know, they, uh, they are just talking about what they see around them as the most likely interpretation. So, um, so in that sense, um, you know, the, the, it's understandable that bureaucrats will never get uh, into the details, but it's unfortunate that there was no scientist that brought it up. And so the anomalies are uh, first um, the trajectory that I mentioned that is aligned with the planets, uh, the fact that, um, uh, that there was this extension, the glow uh, uh, towards the sun during July and August and also now, and we saw in the high-rise image also some, it's actually not towards the sun, it's to, towards the direction of motion, there is some extension of the glow. Um, and the, the mass of this object being so large compared to the previous one, uh, once and then uh, also the arrival time uh, was uh, fine-tuned for for this object to arrive close to uh, Mars, uh, uh, Venus, and then Jupiter, uh, with very small likelihood, one in uh, twenty thousand or so. And then there was much more nickel than iron in the plume of gas that was. Uh, uh, detected around it, and that is extremely unusual for natural objects. We've never seen that before. Usually we see nickel and iron with similar quantities. 
And then uh, the, the amount of uh, water by mass in the, in the cloud of gas is only 4%, which is uh, uh, very unusual because usually water is a main constituent in fa familiar comets. And there is a negative uh, polarization of light that is unprecedented in comets that was discovered. Uh, also, this one, uh, 3i Atlas, came from roughly the same direction as the WOW signal, the radio signal um, that was discovered in 1977. The, the two directions are aligned to within nine degrees, and the chance of that is 0.6%. Uh, and then uh, near a uh, closest approach to the sun, we know that 3i Atlas uh, brightened uh, faster than any known comet and was bluer than the sun. Again, uh, something that was never explained. Uh, and it has a, a jet in the direction of the sun and opposite to it. And uh, the, I estimated how much mass is carried. And, and, and that requires an unusually large surface area uh, to feed those jets. And, and the question is, where, what is indeed the, the origin of these jets? And the other thing is we detected some evidence for non-gravitational acceleration of the object which requires a significant amount of evaporation of it. But it didn't break up. We didn't see any evidence that it broke up. Um, there were, obviously, there are these tightly collimated jets that maintain orientation across a million kilometers in multiple directions relative to the sun, despite the rotation of the object. So the object is rotating, and these uh, jets should have changed direction as the object is rotating if they come from pockets of ice on the surface of a rock. So, so these are 12 uh, anomalies that need to be explained. I'm not saying that they're necessarily technological signatures, but they make me rank this object as uh, four, three or four on the scale between zero and 10, where zero is natural and 10 is technological. And I think we should uh, be inspired to get more data on it to figure it out. The last question, uh, AB, uh, what can we expect until the 19th of December? Uh, what can we expect from 3i Atlas? Yeah, so um, we should monitor the jets coming out of it to figure out where they originate from. Um, we should look at it and see if there are any objects coming from it. These could be either fragments of ice that they break up from the surface of the object in a case where it's natural, or it could be mini probes that this, uh, a mothership releases. Um, and uh, check if it uh, displays any non-gravitational acceleration or any transmission of uh, a signal that we don't expect from a rock. Uh, yesterday, there was a report about the limit on radio transmission in a particular band of frequencies just above uh, uh, gigahertz. Uh, and there was no detection um, except for some signals that uh, the, the researchers claim could have originated from humans and are not related necessarily to 3 Atlas. So they put a limit of uh, a power of a cell phone during the date that they observed it, uh, the 5th of November, uh, we don't know if uh, you know uh, the same limit applies at other dates, but it would be good to continue to monitor it and see if it has any uh, unique technological signature, because that would definitely uh, be unexpected from a natural object. Waiting for this 19th of December, AB, it's a pleasure having you here again with, with us in Northwest TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure to join you. Thank you.